Hey everyone, um, so I just wanted to uh, jump on and quickly do a video. Um, I think I'm going to put this little series together called uh, Own Goals and Home Runs of NAM 2020, something like that, uh, whatever I decide so it will be here. Um, and this is just looking at what I can find. Uh, obviously I'm at home, not at NAM, because I'm no one. Um, but what I can find that stands out to me, obviously, if you're on my channel, hopefully you know the kind of stuff that I'm into, uh, and that's Mezaboogie amps. Um, I'm into all sorts of modelling stuff, so Line 6 Helix, I've got a Kemper up there, uh, Strymon Iridium, um, and recently I've been trying out the Neural DSP plugins as well, just to get a sense of what they're like. Um, so I guess that would be a good place to start. I think it would be really interesting to see... Um, what people's reactions are to the neural DSP quad cortex. Uh, I've been trying out the plugins for the last few days and um, really like them. Um, so it's good to see that there's someone else um, competing in that area um, and maybe hopefully pushing, for instance, Kemper to do something else a bit newer, uh, maybe step up their game in terms of hardware a bit. Um, that probably seems like a slightly contentious thing to say, but um, you know, having something as simple as not even being able to use dual lamps or dual profiles is a bit of a uh, an issue there. Um, so that's a cool area. Um, that's one of the highlights that I think I've seen that's standing out. Now, one of the other things, just because recently. Um, in the Matteo Sato tone videos, which I was trying to get his tone with an Iridium or with the HX Stomp, which is on the side over there. Um, one of the key components of his tone was a Vemuram Janray, um, which as it turns out is a clone of a Timmy. Um, probably most of you will have heard of a Timmy. You might not have played one or you might have, um, but it's cool to see that MXR are making a version of the Timmy, a mini version. Um, however, the price for that is about what you pay for a second-hand Timmy anyway. So for me, I think I'd rather have a Timmy, personally. Uh, I've just got this one, um, and I really kind of like it. It does sort of a tube screamer-ish thing, but with these controls that uh, you can cut bass and you can cut treble. Um, it works a little bit differently to what you would normally get in a pedal. Um, and I think some pretty cool tones. Talking of the Iridium, I guess Nam might be the first place that a few people have got to try out one of these. Um, I can tell you that in my personal life, there's a couple of guitarists that I've lent the Iridium to um, that have really enjoyed it. One was a Kemper user and he's just put himself on the order for an Iridium. Uh, I have no affiliation really with Strymon. Um, maybe one day I might, but um, it's just one of those pedals that I think if you're a person that has a pedal board that they really like and that goes out gigging and sometimes you want to go direct, the Iridium to me is quite a simple solution. You can just chuck at the end of a board and you know that it's going to sound pretty good. Um, and it's yeah not going to take much to power it so to me it's one of those pedals that solves a problem for a few people um, quite a few people and it sounds good uh, those three models in there are as good as anything I've heard on anything else so I compared it with the Kemper and the Helix and, and a real Vox actually a hand wired Vox and those um, those models I think sound as good as any other competitor um, I'd say the most lacking potentially might be the the Marshall, which you know if you convention if you are a Marshall player, I'm not, but I think you might have a different idea of what you might want from the Iridium in that respect. So if you're like a heavier player um, and relying on amp gain, I'm not sure that the Iridium is the pedal for you, um, but it's worth checking out if you get a chance to. Um, but talking of that, Vox have just brought out, uh, they've got a pedal called the Mystic Edge, which is going to be their take on like a pedal version of a, a Vox, which I'm kind of interested to see what that sounds like. Apparently it's using new tube technology. Um, so for me, that's an area which I'd, I might try and get hold of one and do a little comparison with the Iridium. 
uh, just because I was really impressed by the Vox emulation uh, on the Iridium. Um, but that's that's one to look out for. I think they've done three other pedals, so probably a Fender, a Marshall, and I think like a Mesa sound. It might also be interesting to see how that stuff compares with like a the Joyo amp models. Uh, see what we've got: California sound, um, AC tone, American sound, and probably one other. But um, it might be interesting to see how those stack up. I know those Joyo ones are actually a clone of uh, Tech 21, so it's a bit of a dodgy area. But you know, if it's a case of paying £160 for the Vox thing, or getting all of the Joyo pedals for the same money probably, then that might be a, an area that's interesting for people. Um, then I know that Origin Effects are doing something, but I don't know what. So that's an area that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. Um, what I'm hoping for is potentially some sort of a re revival drive, but with more gain. Um, for me, I'm not necessarily the highest gain player out there, but I do use quite a bit of gain uh, from my pedals because I'm using single coil guitars with a low output generally. Um, so as I said, with the revival drive, the gain on there is a touch below what I would generally use uh if i was going for like a, a singing lead tone or something so that's something that i'm kind of looking for um so we'll see whether they come through with that or not um other areas that don't really seem that interesting and i'm not sure how well received the ones last year actually were but the fender Acoustic Sonic stuff. They brought out a Telecaster version last year, which I think got a mixed response, probably at best. Uh, I've not seen any of them in the wild yet. Uh, I don't know if you have, or maybe you've got experience of them. But if you could leave a comment and say, "Yeah, I tried one of those. It was great," or "Yeah, I tried one of those and it was not so great," um, that'd be interesting. Uh, They've brought out a Stratocaster version of this, which I'm not sure if that's what the market was demanding, but it's what they've done. Um, so that'll be interesting to see people's responses to that. I think personally it's one of those things where you look to Fender for a classic design, and I think the Telecaster, or tele what, however they were saying it, the, the, the acoustic Telecaster thing looked a bit odd. And I think the Stratocaster version of it looks a bit more odd. Um, so I'm not sure whether that's going to be the kind of thing that's going to take off. Um, the other area that I looked at, that Charvel have just brought out, or they've just announced a 22 fret version of their DK24, which are kind of in that Ibanez AZ Super Strat pocket. Um, I think the the Charvel 24 fret models uh, to me looked a bit more appealing than the AZ stuff um, but as it's 24 fret it's a phone call sorry that was a call from Fender telling me to stop talking about the uh, acoustic sonic stuff um, where was I yes Charvel um, the 24 fret version I really really like the look of there was like a pink one and an army green one and a blue one but as the 24 frets is not really what I generally would use because I'm a neck pickup guy and when you've got a 24 fret pickup is the pickup is shifted down the guitar obviously um, and for me that's not historically been the sound that I'm kind of going for so it's interesting to see them bring out a 22 fret um, whether I'll ever get to play one of them or not, I'm not sure, but it's a cool thing to see at least. Um, Yamaha have just announced that they've brought out some pretty high-end acoustic nylons for um, for the electric player. Uh, what have they called that? Um, the NTX series. So I think they've got new NX models. They're saying. Um, so that would be an interesting area. I've had one of the NTX guitars in the past. There's a black one, NTX 700, I think. 
and uh, as an electric player I found that one pretty cool to play um, I just didn't use it enough to um, warrant keeping it around but uh, a great little tool to have especially if you're occasionally going for that classical thing that that tone whether it's in a pop context or uh, jazz context I think it's quite a, a decent sound to have available um, what else have we got? I forgot one pedal that came up that I was interested in uh, particularly the uh, Apex, the Maxon Apex 808 so uh, I've not really that clued up on the history of the this Tube Screamer but apparently this is designed by the guy that invented the first one or something like that um, but for me I quite like the Tube Screamer circuit in general and I've got you know I've tried the cheap end I've got a tube overdrive from Behringer um, I've got an expensive Keeley tone workstation which has the red dirt in it uh, I've tried a Duelist which is kind of one of those very expensive um, tube screamers uh, that are out there at the moment um, I've tried an Ibanez TS Mini which is kind of you know one of those kind of in the middle 50 to 70 quid or whatever that kind of range is um, but yeah, this is the Maxon Apex 808, and apparently this is um, going to be one of those really awesome tube screamers. So I'm excited to check that out. This is just a couple of the things that are standing out to me at the moment. So I'm seeing the Timmy uh, from MXR, and I'm liking. Uh, I'm seeing that Revival Drive are doing something new, so I'm keeping my eye out for that, and I'm looking, hoping that this is going to be something with a bit more drive. Um, I'm thinking the Iridium makes a solid case for itself anyway, so go and check that out. But also, um, the Vox take on some amp modelling stuff in pedal format I think will be interesting. And potentially, might if there's might be a, an area to compete with the Iridium. Um, I'm not so sure on the Fender Acoustasonic stuff. Uh, I'm keen to see how people respond to the 22 fret Charvels as I think the 22 fret guitar is an area that really works for me uh, and then finally the thing that stands out as well is the Yamaha uh, NX series the Yamaha NX series um, I'll be keen to try one of those if I can get my hands on one um, so those are the things for now. I think there's going to be plenty more of stuff that gets unveiled throughout today. So I'm probably going to come back and do another video. Um, if you could leave in the comments suggestions for what I should try. Oh, and then the biggest one of them all at the moment for me is the Neural DSP called Cortex. It's caused quite a stir just because it's another um, addition into the modelling uh, kind of world, which Iridium did earlier on this, or last year now actually, yeah. But it's good to see the, the bigger companies like Kemper and Axe FX and stuff get, not that they're bigger necessarily than Iridium, but it's good to see that some of these smaller companies are able to push some ideas forward and hopefully this is stuff that we can see start to roll out across the industry in, in terms of, you know, what they bring to the party. So yeah, leave in the comments below different things that you've seen that stand out to you um, and that I should be paying attention to. Uh, also the Mesa Boogie brought out a tiny combo version of the Mesa Mark 525 which is not in shot. Um, I think that would be a really cool little amp. Um, so yeah.